How's it going, my favorite flying and Star Wars enthusiasts? I'm super excited to be doing an overview with you of a new vehicle coming out in 2022, and I think even could be one of the first vehicles to usher in a new age of flying and aviation, making personal aerial electric vehicles much more of a reality to the public. And the specific vehicle in this category we're gonna be looking at today is called the Jetson 1, and it's certainly an unconventional style of aircraft and gives off some futuristic vibes. I think they try pretty hard to make seem like this vehicle is a land speeder right out of the Star Wars movies. More specifically, the speeder bike scene on the Forest of Endor. So hopefully you can see the similarities and also how cool of a vehicle this really is. But if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name's James Bodie and you are watching Relative Motion, the channel all about showing you the most interesting places in the world and the best and even quirkiest ways to get you there. And if you do like this video at any point, I would certainly hope you consider subscribing down below because that's the best way to help more videos like this come your way. Here we go. The Jetson 1 is certainly one of the first electrical vertical takeoff and landing vehicles on the market, which I'm going to refer to as eVTOLs. And this is certainly one of the first personal eVTOLs available for private sale. And while not available now, supposedly they'll be delivering orders in autumn of 2022 and are very quickly filling orders for 2023 and beyond. And having units available next year for private sale, of course, as of when this video is released, the Jetson 1 might be the first personal eVTOL vehicle on the market available. And if it's not the first, it certainly is close to it. And if you happen to know of an eVTOL already available for private sale on the market, I would love to hear about it down in the comments as always. Now while it's cool, and they certainly market this vehicle as some sort of land speeder, I do right off the bat have to say I don't think this is necessarily the best idea. Because whenever you are flying, distance between you and the ground typically is always your friend. For the main reason, in case of an emergency, you're going to have a lot more time and options available to you as a way out of an emergency. However though, if you are going to pick one of these eVTOLs to use as some sort of a land speeder, I have to admit this might be one of the better options. I'll just start off with the interesting way they did construct this vehicle, almost having a sort of aluminum roll cage around you, which I have to imagine is going to be a decent amount more protection, especially compared to other ultralight vehicles, which the Jetson 1 is supposed to be. And on top of this roll cage, it appears, at least on earlier models, the rotors themselves almost had their own roll cage, which certainly has many benefits, mainly making it next to impossible for the rotors to actually collide with terrain. It does seem, however, though, potentially later models, and maybe even the production models of the Jetson 1, won't actually have these shrouded rotors. But I've also heard the production version will have a terrain avoidance system built in with a computer and motion detectors to detect nearby objects and electronically limit the ability of the Jetson 1 to hit nearby terrain. So basically, if you use the controls in a way that would cause you to collide with terrain, the computer system will override you and control the aircraft, not allowing this collision to ever occur. I will quickly note though, I do think the shrouded rotors are a little more foolproof and less susceptible to failure than an electronically sensor driven system to accomplish the same task. But the shrouded rotors have their own disadvantage. Besides probably slowing the aircraft down in forward flight, I also have to say these shrouded rotors will make this vehicle not as compact and is actually particularly important with the Jetson 1 because from what I've heard, although I can't find any pictures or videos to show it, this eVTOL is one of the few ones that I know of that actually has rotors that fold into itself, obviously making it much more compact and versatile as far as storing space and maybe less obviously, makes it easier to fit in another vehicle if you want to travel around with the Jetson 1, but keep it fully charged until you reach a location where you finally want to use it. And if you follow this channel at all, you probably know the first idea I'd want to do with this is stick it inside a private jet if it's big enough. So when you get to your final destination in your private jet, you can actually pull it out and use it to fly to your final destination. Because obviously most of the time, your final destination is not going to be the airport you land at. And if you're just a regular rich person, you 
probably just rent a car. But I do think that gets me to the first point, and maybe even the biggest negative, of the Jetson 1, and these EV tolls in general, I would say. And that is, if you thought the range on an electric car was bad, the range on electric aircraft is actually even worse, at least in my opinion. It's maybe as hard as that can be to believe. And I guess to prove it, this Jetson 1 can only go 20 miles on a full charge, which will mean, if you want to return to your first location, it probably wouldn't be going much more than 8 or 9 miles for a round trip. And while that's not much, I will say that still is something, and it's better than the zero miles you had available before this came out, but it's worth being aware this is only going to be useful for very close locations. And before you go saying, with that short range, nobody's even going to buy this, or these will never exist, because they've already sold 12 of these that they will be finally delivering in autumn of 2022. A while ago, when I actually had started writing this video, they had sold another 50 in 2023, but I just checked again right before recording this video. And they've already sold another 20 of these, making it around 80 in total, and releasing about 70 of those in 2023. So they certainly have their hands full at this point. If you've been looking for your real life flying electric car, looks like that day is certainly coming. Although, as much as they even make it seem like the Jetson 1 can't even hover down roads, even maybe having some sort of brake light in the back, I uh, probably wouldn't suggest this for several reasons. I guess besides the ones I already mentioned, flying close to the ground. If you did hover this down roads, or fly, or whatever you want to call it, I think you'd have a high potential taking off other cars on the road, especially the one right behind you, because this obviously uses air to move, and not wheels down a road. All this air is going to kick up all sorts of debris, or debris, or fod, or whatever you want to call it, that can be flung at the car behind you, or even cars passing by. And I guess that's not even going to get into the legality of trying to fly down a road. Because the only reason I think this propeller car got away with it is it actually had four wheels still touching the ground. Because as far as I know, as soon as you lift off the ground, you are no longer a car, and now are an aircraft. And I can't imagine there's many laws in favor of you flying one of these down a road. And to be honest, besides being super close to the ground, which is obviously not your friend when you're flying, it kind of defeats the whole purpose of one of these to follow a road. Because these EV tolls can obviously go in a straight line between your departing location and your destination. Well, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. And I certainly hope you think these Jetson ones, just like I do, think these things are something straight out of a science fiction movie. And if you did enjoy it, or I guess if you didn't, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Or you could even smash that like button. And until I see you next time, I'm James Bodie, and you've been watching Relative Motion.